Liars are no longer tolerated in the living or actually throughout the home. This has led to many inferior Bluetooth and Wi-Fi speakers that offer ease of use at the expense of audio quality. Is there no other way? That was literally the question when I requested the DIN Audio CO2 wireless active speakers. DIN Audio is a well respected loudspeaker manufacturer and I have never been let down by their products. The CO2 is a very small speaker measuring only slightly over 17 cm wide, 25.5 cm high and slightly over 15 cm deep. It comes with a detachable grille and is available in both satin black and satin white. The front holds the 14 cm woofer and the 27 mm tweeter. Despite the small housing it also holds a DSP and two 65 watt amplifiers, one driving the woofer, the other driving the tweeter. The only reason the speakers are able of producing lows down to 40 Hz at minus 3 dB is due to that DSP that electronically compensates for the limitations such as a small driver and housing. That's nothing new. Every Bluetooth speaker and Wi-Fi speaker nowadays does this. But it puts high stress on the woofer. A speaker driver is nothing more than a piston that has to pump air, more or less like the panel that creates the waves in a wave pool. The difference is that a speaker does need to make waves at all kinds of wavelengths, while in a wave pool there is only one wavelength. If you then know that the energy in sound doubles by halving the frequency, then you know that there is a potential problem. The amount of air a speaker can excite is determined by the diameter of the cone times the excursion. The CO2 only has for a 14 cm woofer meaning that under normal conditions it is not likely to produce the claimed 40 Hz. That is where the digital signal processing, DSP for short, kicks in. It does not only provide a crossover filter to send the lows to the woofer amplifier and the highs to the tweeter amplifier, it also electronically compensates for the natural roll off at low frequencies. This means that more power must be sent to the woofer. More power means larger excursions of the cone, but also larger currents that causes heat in the motor that drives the cone. Cheaper products often filter off the real lows at least one octave up, which you might not notice at first. A set of CO2s comprises of a master unit and a slave unit. Each contain a DSP and two amplifiers, but the inputs are only on the master unit. When we look at the rear we find a power connection on both master and slave unit and three audio inputs on the master unit. A stereo line level input on 3.5 mm jack, a stereo line level input on RCAs and a stereo digital input on optical toslink connector that supports up to 192 kHz sampling. You only need to connect the source or sources to the master speaker from where it is sent wirelessly to the slave speaker. A fourth input is the Bluetooth connection. This of course is of lower quality due to the limitations of Bluetooth. If you don't want any connections from your sources to the speakers and still maintain uncompressed quality up to 96 kHz, then you need the Xeo hub that comes at 250 euros and provides a wireless connection with the Xeo speakers. The rear shows the inputs. Analog line level on 3.5 mm jack, analog line level on RCA, digital on Toslink, digital on RCA and digital on USB for direct connection to a PC. When I connected it to my Mac, it was immediately seen and it was playing within seconds. Furthermore, there are push buttons to set up Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, a three position zone switch, a service input that you are not supposed to use and the input for the 5V DC 2 amp power supply. The three zone switch that is also on the rear of the speakers lets you group speakers in one of three zones. 
Each zone can have more than two speakers, so you could group the speakers in the living and in the kitchen in zone 1 for instance. It's impressive to hear how deep these tiny speakers go. Mind you, Dinorio did do a very good job here, but even they can't perform miracles. The Xeo2s do sound clearly better than the streaming products where Sonos is the market leader in and so they should be because they are higher priced. But if sound is your prime concern, you might compare them with larger models or even passive models by Dinorio. Forcing small drivers to do more than is normal does require processing, lots of power and large cone movements. Processing can be done fairly unaudible today and often works better than passive crossovers. But lots of power and large cone movements are both difficult to control fully. That leads to a slightly artificial low end and in this case a mid-range with a slightly glassy edge. Again, it's no comparison to the plastic streaming speakers that sound stuffed, boomy and muffled. I will not review those speakers and I do review the Xeo2, but I compare them with other real speakers I would review. See the CO2s as the smart for two cars, a very good solution for the city, but a Volkswagen Polo or equal is more all round as a car. The same goes for the CO2s, except that despite their name, the CO2 footprint is considerably lower than of a car. And listening to music is also far healthier than driving a car. But all jokes apart, if you are pressed for space, the CO2s are really a fine solution. But they are a compromise, well made, engineered to the extreme and clearly be better than the plastic streaming speakers of some other brands, but no equal for a larger model. This is of course always the case, but the return on investment when you step from this size speaker to one step bigger is rather attractive. That might not bother you and if so, you buy a very well made product that pushes the performance of such a small speaker to the near impossible. At 1300 euros a pair, they might seem expensive to some. At least, that's the comment I heard from some friends. But when I explained that for that money, they buy 2 times 2 DA converters, 2 times 2 65 volt amplifiers, 2 DSPs and 2 two way speakers, they did change their mind. And even more when they saw the speakers for they are really beautifully built. A table stand and a wall mount are also available and come in the same quality. The hub provides the complete wireless setup. There even is an extender if you have to cover larger distances and there is a link that lets you connect other equipment as play out. As said, this small is a compromise, if, but if it has to be this small, the CO2 is a very good, well engineered choice that again confirms the expertise of Dinodia. If you have enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel or follow me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. Tell your friends on the web about it and make sure that we have more people that watch this show. I thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>